What is going on guys, my name is Soraka Bose, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna have a community showcase between Dark Elves and uh, Empire. Let's jump into the Dark Elf army first. So for the front line, three units of Dark Riders Repeater Crossbow. These guys are super super good because uh, they are quite fast, they are very fast Knight Cavalry Skirmishers. They have AP damage, which is huge, and they have 115 range. And compared to Empire Skirmishers, for example, Pistoliers, which only has 80 range. So basically, these guys actually outrange them quite, by quite a bit. And uh, which means if you're just gonna do like a dance back and forth, these guys kinda kinda just gonna basically win the engagement because they they can just focus fire into one of those uh piston leaders and just delete them. And uh for the for the second nine, which is the infantry, we have we have three units of straight spears. Very solid bread and butter and uh Nothing else to say about them. They're just basic um, dark elf infantry, and uh, they have silver shield. They have very good leadership. They have very good melee defense, and they have anti large. They uh, they have you know uh, charge defense against large, all the right stuff. And the one unit of coat one chariots, very very good. AP missiles and AP melee attacks, and also these guys are quite quite fast not not insanely fast but 66 is okay and they're heavily armored 110 armor and uh, for the back nine we have very heavy cavalry contingent consists of three cut one knights and uh, the one and only ebon claw which is the Drake knight regiment of renown these guys are super good the most elite Cavalry on Dark Half Roaster, and that they are absolutely gorgeous. Alright, for the leadership, we have a Spring Sorcerer of Death on a horse with a uh, Arcan Countdown, Opa Amulet, Felipuna, Spirit Lich, Life Liching, and uh, yeah, that's that's really really solid. And then let's jump into Empire's build. So we have four Pistolius Vanguard deployed. And uh, these guys are very good. These guys are very, very fast. They have 360 um, firing arc. And uh, the only downside is that they don't really have a lot of ammunition, which is a little bit downside. But our overall Pistolius are very good. And then for the infantry, we have six units of uh, spearsmen with shields, and all of them at rank two. Okay, the reason why they are rank two is because um, I think you gain three melee defense when you put them at rank two, and uh, which makes them all at forty-five melee defense, which is very good, and uh, they are also. Um, have shield and uh, they have charge defense against large and uh, they are anti-large as well so yeah they are very solid and then for the back line we have two heavy hitters great swords okay so great swords in this matchup I personally don't like them because they trade really bad with uh, executioners and even just uh, even just Black Gods of Lagrand, but uh, in this case, his opponent didn't bring any elite infantry. So in this case, Great Swords can be really good. And also, Great Swords have AP damage, which means they can actually dish out decent amount of damage into those uh, heavily armored um, Dread Knights. And uh, on the flank, we have three units of Rex Guard. These guys are very good. They are heavily armored. And uh, they have decent amount weapon strengths. They have very good charge. They have very good melee attack, and uh, they look gorgeous. <laughs> what else you can say? Rex guard, very very good empire heavy knight. 
and uh, as a short cavalry, you can't get anything better than this. And now for the leadership, we have a Longson Witch Hunter. The Witch Hunter always looks so beautiful, like so chill, with a a blade in one hand and a pistol in the other hand. And also, Witch Hunter actually does a a, a huge amount of AP damage as well. And uh, of course, Witch Hunter, you can fire while moving. And uh, you have a 360 firing arc. And uh, Witch Hunters are immune to psychology. They have magic resistance of 25% and missile resistance of 15%. Of course, he's rocking with Accusation. Accusation actually got changed a little bit. The, the whole mechanic actually got changed. Right now, it's sort of like a like a debuff one, which basically lower your opponent's uh, mini stats. And then you have Opa Amulet, which is like a um, uncast 20% damage reduction. And then uh, you have Skull of Katan, which reduces the power recharge rate of your opponent, which is quite nice if you cast onto any unit actually. And then you have Slippery, Slippery which basically means you um, you gain a lot of speed while having a lot of mid defense to just uh, get you out of some very dicey situations. And then for the Lord in command here, you have got Bells, 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 okay, Bells the Sargelt, all right. So he's rocking with Staff of War Lands, which is like a huge uh, Winds of Magic battery. And then on top of that, you have Arcan Kandun as well, so it's like double battery. And then you have Transmutation of Lead, you have Plague Rust, and then you have Searing Doom, which is like a bombardment spell, and which is quite strong against multiple like low armored combatants. And then he's also rocking with the Metal shifting, which basically whenever he's casting, he's gonna make everybody on the map gain 10% AP damage and 10% uh, weapon strength. And he's rocking with evasion as well, which is a uh, constant plus 5 melee defense and plus 6 speed for himself. And uh, that's it. Let's see how this is gonna play out. I'm gonna put my camera right here for a purpose. <laughs> And let's go. This is exactly what I'm talking about. One volley of focus fire from those um, Dark Riders. The pistol is just gone. And then there's a fat Fatal Buna casting onto the other pistol ears. And uh, they, are, they are gonna go as well. But as you can see, um, only the initial focus fire did a lot of damage onto those pistolets. Like if you keep them moving while those guys are targeting, uh, those those crossbow shots not gonna be that effective. But anyways, Empire right now is in a very dicey situation here because uh, right from the get go, Empire is pretty much uh, two pistolets down, and uh, the third pistolet unit actually about to get shredded while retreating by those uh, Darker the Expos. And here, the Vanguard contingent that I completely forgot to introduce from the Darker player, the Snatchness Harvester Doomfire Warlocks, and uh, two units of uh, Dark Rider with shields are just Vanguard deployed at the back here, and then right now they're just pushing straight outside the forest. I can't believe I actually forgot to introduce them, but anyways, and uh, they are about to hit Empire hard and here very f hit Empire very fast. And here, the Doomfire Warlocks and uh, together with the Dark Rider sh with shields actually caught this Rex Guard um, without a charge. So if you play a Shock Cavalry and you miss a charge, then they're gonna really suffer. But here, the Searing Doom has stayed onto those low armor units, did a lot of damage actually, that's quite good. And there, there's a big, big soul stealer cast down to the witch hunter and those uh, trace spears. Empire spearsmen, sorry. And uh, surprisingly, those Rex guard actually managed to hold, this, hold, hold the ground 
and actually managed to beat up Dark Riders a little bit. But again, they are in a sandwich situation here, fighting both uh, the Snatchers Harvesters and as well as the Dark Riders. By the way, there's a accusation cast here onto the Snatchers Harvesters. That's quite interesting. That's going to lower their melee defense and armor by quite a bit. So right now they are down to 5 melee defense and 0 armor. And uh, I would like to come a little bit here because uh, I think with your vanguard units just pushing really aggressively, your frontline units need to push in as well to just basically trying to take advantage of the surprise attack because right now those guys are fighting really valiantly but uh, all these army are not really doing anything. It's better to just engage the Empire's front line and uh, also just wrap around with your heavy heavy cavalry units. And here Empire is actually is the one who's um, being aggressive. They are actually attacking the Dark of Nine and also there are two units of Rex Guard actually pushing into the flank and uh, they are about to charge into these uh, Cold One Knights. And Cold One Chariots actually did, a, did some job. Right now they are about to charge in the flank of those uh, Spearsmen and these Spearsmen are not, in, not braced so which means they're gonna take a lot of damage. And now uh, let's put into the Loma Speed so these Ampalas, uh, this Rex Guard actually just gonna be um, out of the map, perhaps. They are down to 30 model, they still have some fighting capability, but uh, hit point wise they, they are really just suffered. And also here, oh my gosh, this is absolutely slaughter. Like, Pistolius just basically all gone at this point. They got just sandwiched by all these light cavalry units and that they are not really that decent in melee and uh, they're just gonna completely get wiped out and here the front line is about to engage now so two units stacking on this uh, Dread Spears not a ideal situation and right now here cut one chariots and uh, two Dread Spears units three units invested here fighting one two three four five six fighting six Empire Infantry Unit. That's definitely not a good situation for Empire. You need to spread out. Maybe you see you notice the gap here. Maybe you need to chuck one more spears here to to basically block those uh, heavy cavalry charges. But here, Empire player actually made a good move. I believe these these Cold One Knights actually got charged by those Rex Guard. So basically. Uh, they missed the charge, so which is bad because uh, they need the charge impact damage to do great against Rex Guard. And here on the battlefield, Pistol Ear is completely gone. Witch Hunter is getting cast to something. I think that's like a. Oh, not yet, but Pistol Ears are just get wiped out completely. And there's a Spirit Leech casted onto. Onto Belzaha. And here, there's a big transmutation of lead casted onto those Dark Elf units, nor the melee capability. And here, finally, those two great swords actually managed to wrap around. But the thing is, they are too slow to catch anything, because at the back, it's all just cavalry and, uh, and those uh, Dark Rider Expos. And here I want to point out that um, Rex got really suffered against all these uh, knights units, even though they got a free charge of onto one of the Cold One knights and managed to basically get rid of them. But the thing is, there were four units here, and all of them are very good. Like all of them can win against Rex Guard one by one v one, so so it's not definitely not a good situation. And uh, I want to just slow down a little bit, just to basically observe the battlefield. So, Snanishness, Harvesters, almost gonna completely die out. These Dark Rider with Shields actually rallied and they're about to come back and do some more hurt. Witch Hunter is very low, pop slippery, trying to just 
get involved in the engagements here and here. A very depleted Rex God is coming back looking to basically do more hurt. The ideal situation is to just pin down this Dark Sorcerer with death. And uh, right now on the battlefield, um, skirmish battle mm, almost resolved and uh, Dark Elf actually won the day. So right now on the map, Dark Elf still have a lot of cavalry, a lot of skirmishers left. But infantry wise, I think it's all Empire because Empire brought a lot more infantry. Dark Elves only had 3 infantry. So there's another Spiritish custom, the Witch Hunter. Like, the Witch Hunter really was the main target in this battle. And here, that, uh, that Spring Sorcerer of Death still just fighting two Spearsman units. And now Brezahai actually dived onto her. And she needs to get put out of here. She's in a world of trouble here. And uh, those guys are still just chasing a shattered unit. Needs to be put back and same as the evil cross. Needs to just get involved. Right now a downfield charge into the Scrazos would be very nice. And then the Code 1 chariots and those Code 1s actually doing a, a lot of work on the, on the far flank and absolutely decimate two units of Spearsmen and uh, the Red Scout. And here those uh, Dark Rider repeated crossbow needs to just uh, do more work. And Dark, the Spring, <laughs> the spring Source of Death actually got took out by the Witch Hunter shots. That's very cinematic. And right now, um, all the Dark Elf troops are gonna take a penalty of minus 16 because the leader died. And there you go, this is a fantastic charge from those evil claws right onto those great swords. Great swords are not gonna have a good day. And then there's a big transmutation of leak casted onto the blob that's gonna lower those nice stats. And uh, there you go, Dark of Player actually did a fantastic job by pulling those evil claws out because you don't really want to just put your knights uh, in pronoun engagement in there because of the transmutation of lead. Right now Witch Hunter is about to die to those uh, Dark Rider repeated crossbows, almost. And here in the center, Empire still has a lot of infantry left. And uh, look on Dark Elf side, there's a very healthy Code 1 Knights unit and uh, also those evil claws and also two very healthy Dark Rider crossbows but in the center is all empire and the code one chariot actually got routed as well here basically this evil claws just are wiping the floor of the scattered empire infantry units rex got actually come back and uh, they, want, they want more blood which is nice but the thing is they actually got peppered pretty harshly by those uh, dark rider expos there you go. Now they got charged and uh, they are about to get sandwiched. But uh, Belzahar and uh, Great Source are here. So these cavalry is to just decimate those Rex God and get pulled out straight away. And incoming the evil pull. Wow. That's actually. Looking fantastic. There you go, Evil Claw got pulled out once more. And in the center pocket, we got a lot of mix of Empire Spears and the Great Swords alongside with Belt the Heart, the Gelt. And uh, observing from the distance are Dark Elf Cavalry Contingents. They're all just Surrounding the Empire. Oh my gosh, there's a Cotland Cherry coming. Ah oh, man, that was a nice charge. And this Cotland Cherry is, is to get pulled out. Oh my gosh, there's another charge from the Evan Claw. And uh, all the all the Dark of Mice are coming in there from different angles. Wow, that's really graphic love it. So right now, Empire got completely surrounded. 
But uh, because Empire still have a general on the battlefield, so they are still willing to fight, willing to duke it out. And also, these are mainly Spearsmen, so Spearsmen gonna do very well against the Sound of Hammer units because they have anti large. And here as well, it's just uh, Dark Elf Knights and uh, Light Cavalry and Heavy Cavalry against Empire Greatsource and, uh, and Spearsmen. Right now, looking at the battlefield, it's pretty much all Empire now. Yeah, there you go. And uh, that's it. That's the game, I suppose. Look at the balance power is completely in favor of Dark Elves, and that's it. That's the game. So, mm, I do believe Pistoliers are a decent pick in this matchup, but the thing is, you don't really want to Vanguard deploy them because they kind of just get countered by those uh, Dark Rider Expos. And uh, those Dark Rider <laughs> Repeater crossbows actually did a lot of hurt. 115 kills, 63 kills, and 53 kills. Like, they did a lot of heavy lifting this game. And same as this Dark Rider with shields, they, they actually managed to rack up 99 kills. That's, Im that's amazing. And uh, the, the Ebo Claw actually killed a lot. They're always going to perform because they're the elite of the elite. And uh, that Spring Source of Death actually got herself in a very tight situation and uh, managed to to found hit, to found her grave pretty 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 fast, like very very early in the battle. So definitely need to pay more attention to her. And uh, Otio, I think Empire Pistolius are good pick, but the way you play Pistolius needs to be more tactical you don't want to vanguard deployed and while you're moving in to chase those uh, dark rider repeater crossbows you need to really commit because pistol dealers can fire while moving and these guys can't and uh pistol dealers um th those pistol shots can't really be dodged while these guys can be easily dodged so if with better micromanagement i think four pistolias is just basically are more than enough to, to take out those dark riders but you need to be really careful and also there are multiple light cavalry skirmishes on the battlefield you need to worry about so i think three of them in the end got caught by dark riders with shield and uh, those nationalist harvesters and just die horribly which is pretty pretty bad situation and uh race guard they are a very good unit, but you need to make sure you get the charge off. You don't really want them to get caught and lose the charge bonus because charge bonus for short carry means everything. And uh, also, two of them on the on the flank actually just got decimated by four by four cold one knights. <laughs> I mean, including those knights of the Ebon Claw. So, yeah, I think uh, definitely. Uh, needs to make more tactical, um, correct tactical decisions in the future. And uh, for now, I think that's it for this battle. And I hope you guys enjoy this community showcase. And uh, Orangbos signing off.